friends! My name is Lorraine. You're at my channel, Shane Brick Cottage. Welcome. I have so much to share with you. It has just been bonkers here at our house. So um, if you're new, this channel is Shane Brick Cottage is all about all my cross stitching, quilting, um, and now some English paper piecing quilting and just all the fun stuff. Uh, so if you're new, welcome. I hope that you'll stick around. You'll hit the like button. You'll subscribe to my channel. We'll become friends and it will be great fun. And if you're a returning viewer, hi, sorry. We haven't got together since I looked at my notes. I think July 12th, I last posted. And today is August 1st, um, Thursday night. So I'll put it up tomorrow morning. Uh, so since I'm gonna be a little crunched on time and you know that I'm a lazy person when it comes to show notes, I'm not doing them. They'll be just some bare basics. So if there's something you want more information on, please do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, you can email me at shanebrookcottage at gmail.com or I'll leave a comment on the video. Um, greatly appreciate it and I'm so happy to share with you. So where do I even begin? I know we need to talk about the fair because yes, 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 yes. It was great. Um, so let's, oh, let's talk about last time I did the whole microphone thing, which is right here. And the little microphone died partway through because I didn't charge it. But tonight I went to use it for the second time, you know, just the second time. And this will not pair now to the, my iPad. It's a $10 item. It didn't come with an owner's manual. I've YouTubed it. Apparently, it, you plug it in and it works. Well, for me, it's not working. I never really did think I had a huge um, problem with the audio, but I um, this one is gonna go over here and I may invest in a little bit nicer one because um, that was like 10 bucks, so. And I did get some feedback and you guys liked it. So that was um, surprising. Uh, I just like, I just like, and so full of stuff to say. So let's start, let's start with the fair. So I have a, a pile of ribbons that I haven't even taken the um, exhibitor cards off of yet. Whoops, whoops, I dropped one. Hold on, let me get it. 13 things, I won 11 ribbons. Lots of blue in there. Uh, oh, I think I have another one here laying. I got a white one here. Somebody lost their tag. Now I did, and I'll insert while I'm talking here, I did take some photos of the items with their ribbons while they were still on display at the fair. Um, so super excited. Um, just a quick rundown. Placement with matching napkins, blue. Uh, my small counted cross stitch pillow, my um, my favorite quilt, the Hearts at Home crib quilt, blue. This one was the baby bib, same pattern I used last year. Also got blue, um, a thimble blossoms pattern, but I used different fabric, of course. So blue. <gasps> my Dresden plate pillow my oh my hive rules we gotta talk about cross stitch because so i learned i learned something my uh my silent night got disqualified actually two of my things did so anyway i'll tell you about that so so well we'll talk about it now so here's one so this doesn't have my original exhibitor entry tag on it so after i checked in like the person checks you in make sure you like did everything they wanted you to do 
then they pass it over to other people when you're not around and they go over it again and then the judges talk about it. So this was for my rolling pin cross stitch and I categorize that as a medium cross stitch. Uh, they, my fair will only count cross stitch if it's framed. I did not know that. And last year I won a ribbon for one of my pieces and it wasn't framed. Actually two of my pieces weren't framed. So, but this year they said, no, absolutely. It has to be in a frame. So the rolling pin, I didn't, I didn't look it up. They put it in a different class. I'll have to look that up, but they gave me a blue ribbon. They liked it. it they just kicked it out of cr the cross stitch category I had it in. And then one of the ones that did not win a ribbon was, um, it was so pretty. My Silent Night by Stitching with the Housewives. I did a little round and then I put it on that Paisley and Polka Dots uh, church or chapel board. And since it wasn't framed, they moved it over to woodworking since I guess because it was on a wood, a painted wood frame. My husband was like, let it go, Lorraine, because that, that night we went and checked. I was just like, that was so cute. But now I know. So now I know going forward, um, you know, for my fair, cross stitch has to either be framed, like frame, frame, with a frame, with wire to hang it, or, um, a pillow so so there's that and then this is um, this was my throw size quilt square dance which I'm gifting to a, a friend uh, a, a friend of ours um, we're gonna go to their house in Florida for the first time um, they invited us down because they go down there for the winter so I'm gonna gift them this quilt and then I won two red ribbons. This is for a quilt. I can't think of which one it is now. Potluck. My red, white, and blue quilt. The pattern was by um, Sherry McConnell. Loved it. I did the little sheep and remember I had some quilting issues when I was long arming it. I don't know if that's why. Oh, oh, they even wrote on the back. I didn't know if they wrote on all of them some PC not lined up. There was a pencil mark. That's interesting. I just now noticed that. So that's why I got red and not blue. This one was my set of four napkins. No notes on this one, but I did see the one that got first place and it was so pretty. So mine was just machine sewed. She did embroidery. Let me get a drink. I'm like parched because I'm talking so much. So she had these little delicate linen napkins that she embroidered a motif in each corner. They were pretty, very pretty. And then um, the pillowcase I made got third place. My table runner, I was a little disappointed on this one too. <laughs> Pumpkins in a row, uh, no notes on the back why I got third place, but it got third place. I was really stoked about that one because it had prairie points and I'd never done those before. Um, I'm thinking maybe perhaps I hand stitched the binding on it because of the prairie points. I couldn't machine stitch it. And I know my hand stitching um, maybe wasn't consistent, consistent size stitches, all of that, but I'm glad I got a ribbon. And then I got another ribbon, I don't know what for, but if I have a picture, I'll throw it in there. So all in all, a wonderful experience. You know, you can't always win. <laughs> so last year wasn't beginner's luck. I'm on to something here. So that was a lot of fun and I appreciate you guys cheering me on. I, I do wanna share with you one last thing about the fair and then I'll stop talking about it. They give you and I think it might be in my purse. Yeah. You get um, a small check for each ribbon you win. And, you know, I was taking my stuff out. I was rushing because I had to leave our family reunion and run up to pick up my stuff. And it was super hot and I was rushing. And so I just took everything, put it in the car after I picked up my check. And then I was quickly looking at it and I was missing two, two lines. So I didn't have an uh, a payment for two of my ribbons. So then I use my little project cards because on my project cards, I wrote what category I entered stuff in and 
all of that. So then I took it back in, talked to the head judge. They checked my work. Yes, they owed me for two more things. They were going to send me a new check. And I was like, okay, that's fine, whatever. Well, then, like, I was just like, oh, why, why? It doesn't even matter. It's, it's such a little amount of money. It was really the fun and the ribbon. And, like, why would I make that poor person who's volunteered probably thousands of hours through the years recut a check for me? So then I went back in. And then you, you could see the look on her face was like, oh, not this lady again. And I said, I'm really sorry, but if it's okay with you, I'm okay if you're okay. Like, you don't have to pay me for the others. I go, I just, I just, I'm happy with my ribbons um, and all of that. And like, I put the biggest smile on her face because I think she thought that like I was going to point out another issue. And so, it, you know, just be kind to people. And it made me feel good. It made me feel good enough that I remembered that interaction with her and shared it with you guys. Um, just be kind. I mean, if it was like, you know, a lot of money, I would have been like, sure, you need to bring me a check. But we're talking, we're talking a few dollars. Um, so, so that was the fair. It was so much fun. So let's move on to, um, oh, I have a thank you card I want to share. So um, this person won past the stash and I did pull the past the stash winners and I'll have that later on. And then I have a new past the stash. And if you're new here, past the stash is, um, just something that I have personally in my stash or collection. Um, either I'm not going to use or I, you know, it's a pattern I have used, but I'm gonna pass it on. So it, it's, it's that. So anyway, this person, Charlotte, she sent me this beautiful card with the glitter and wrote me a lovely note. And, um, and then she sent me a little bit of pocket money for the postage, which is not necessary at all. But I thank, thank you, Charlotte. I really appreciate it. And, and I'm just gonna say Charlotte's from Iowa. I was born in Iowa. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Charlotte. And I won't, I won't share your last name because I didn't ask you if that would be okay. But your card really touched my heart, like a lot. Thank you. And it's not necessary. Uh, if you win a pass the stash from me, folks, you you don't have to send me a thank you card. You don't have to pay me, send me money for postage. Um, I I just want to do that. But if you do, that's fine too. Whatever you know, I'm not gonna say don't don't send me a card. But you know what I mean. Anyway, anyway, I am so wound up. So let's just talk. Like okay, so we. I don't even know where to begin. We had a new grandbaby uh, two days ago. Briar was born, he came early. They took Ashley in to be induced and then she ended up having a C-section. Baby and mama are doing great. I am absolutely going to um, insert some pictures here of him. Um, if I do say so myself, he is adorable and handsome. He is just a perfect little cherub. Um, we got to see him for the first time last night. We went up to the hospital um, since Ashley staying in for um, three or four days just because of the C-section. Um, so we were over the moon, over the moon. Speaking of being over the moon with grandchildren, yesterday, Asher turned seven and his dad got him a um, little mini bike, so that was pretty cool they sent me a video so that was neat other big news let's see how can it even be more exciting than that we bought a camper so I know this is a floss tube channel and I'm just like sharing all about my life uh, sorry <laughs> but I need to share it so exciting uh, we 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 used to have a pop-up. We sold it a couple years ago with the intention of buying a travel trailer. We had looked really hard for a travel trailer and then we decided that we were going to wait because um, of the cost, of the, the limitations on our time right now. Um, you know, Steve's retiring next year, so we're getting closer to that dream, but I still have, you know, I probably still have another decade left before I'm going to retire. 
So, you know, and all these family commitments, whenever you have time to camp. Anyway, long story short, there was this camper, uh, like we live between Bonneville and Gettysburg. Uh, if you're a Pennsylvania, you know. Anyway, in Bonneville, which is like, don't blink, you're gonna miss it. This family had this little camper in their backyard and, and it was gorgeous. And we always joke, like, don't they ever take it out? Maybe we should like knock on their door and see if they want to sell it. Maybe joking around, maybe they just like let us rent it from them for the weekends or whatever. So anyway, I'm pulling through town and like they have a for sale sign up. And I was like, not shy. I just like pulled in the driveway, wrote down the phone number and went home and told Steve. And he's looking at me like, uh, we just told him that we were going to put in a, you know, we just called the, the HVAC people and said, we're, we need a new system. So we're not, you know, we're not made of money, but the AC is struggling. It is 20 years old. That's how old our house is. It's, it's on its last leg, especially with the heat and humidity. And he's looking at me like, I don't know, Lorraine, I don't even know. I'm like, let's just call. Let's just see what they're asking for. Let's just go look at it. You know, like, like, <laughs> And, we're, and still, as we're driving to their house to go look at it, you know, he's just kind of like. And then we started looking at it and it was like almost 100% of everything we wanted in our little dream travel trailer. It's just a couple's trailer. I'll just throw in a couple small pictures and um, maybe I'll share some more later about it. But anyway, I'm over the moon. Like... I'm stressed out because we, we spent a lot of money. For us, it's a lot of money, but it was like so, oh my God, I can't wait. So um, we are taking out it twice at the end of this month. And then we hope to get it out once in October. Um, campgrounds sometimes are hard to get into. Uh, like we wanna go in October cause it's cooler and then do the whole trick or treat thing. Um, so anyway, I'll keep you guys posted and uh, Yay, 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 we got a camper. So um, let's really just dig into floss too. So um, let's start with en English paper piecing. That will be the only quilt that I show you today. And then the rest is going to be cross stitch, um, haul and pass the stash and plans. And I think also I might do, I'm keeping an eye on the time here. I might do a small whip parade because I think I'm ready to switch out from summer to early fall in stitching. I think that's where I want to go because Kelly and I on uh, from Highway Farm on Highway J, um, we kind of message back and forth. We both have the quilted witch chart, and we were talking about maybe starting it like today, like this month. So um, I need to get on the stick for that and maybe send her a message and see if she still wants to do that. Um, if she doesn't, um, that's fine too. I think I'm going to start it because I really like the pattern that I bought last year. So without further ado, English paper piecing. Shall we use all fancy voices? When we're <laughs> Stop it. Okay. Can you tell that most of the week, like I was just like sad and like depressed. I don't know what was going on. And now I'm like riding a high. Got a little bit of manic going on tonight. So here is my test piece, which <laughs> I love this. It's kind of, so, um, so that was my test. And then let me show you, I'm gonna set that aside and that will continue at some point. And then let me show you my actual one. So this is for um, Shelly at Antique Needleworks and Carrie at Tiger Lily Designs are hosting a quilt along called the Grumpy Susan Quilt Along. And there's the hashtag for it. So if you'd like to know more about it, please visit one of their channels. They're, they're sharing it each on their, their respective channels. And I've learned so much from both of them. I've learned so much from my friend Kelly, not Highway J. Kelly, but I've learned stuff from her, but, but but my other friend Kelly for English paper PC. So here is where I'm at on mine. 
So I'm using Grandmother's House by Riley Blake, or put out by Riley Blake. Uh, Jennifer is the designer. So, yeah. So I'm the the what I'm working on now is the outside ring is all gonna be white, and then um, and then I'll have my first block done. And speaking of English paper piecing, I want to share with you guys some tools that I'm using that I really like. So first of all. They both sort of suggested to use these really nice needles, this type of needle. The only problem for me was I couldn't thread it. It's really tiny. So I got one of these little clover threaders and it took like forever to come in the mail. I should have just drove into town to Joann's. I, I kid you not, it probably took three weeks to come and they sent it in this ginormous box, which for this little guy, but it works like magic. All you do is you stick your needle um, eye side down, lay your thread across here, press down, and every time it threads perfectly. Cannot say enough nice things about this product. And, you know, I'm not a paid spokesperson for anyone. That's just what I like. So I definitely wanted to share that with you guys. That made a huge difference. And then I am using, oh, I wanted to talk to you about the glue too. So here's the Bougie Sue Daily Glue, which they recommended. It's nice. I like that, that it's in an ink pen, but I've also found that this, the glue sticks work just as well. And when I have one more refill for this, probably when this is done, I probably wouldn't pay the money for these because this works just as well. And actually, I think it holds just a little bit better because with the Sue Daily Glue, after I glue based it, I am using some Wonder Clips until the glue sets. And again, I mean, you want the glue not to be permanent because you're going to peel the paper out. But as I've noticed, as my flower is getting bigger and my hexes are getting more um, handled, beat, beat up the glue is letting go and so now I, and so now I'm hand basting some of them so um I love the glue it's fast but I also like the hand basting because um you know I don't want to risk losing my shape um but so far so good and I watched um Shelly and the antique needle worker how to you know do your corners like I think she said to do them three times and I did, and it's like really nice. So I just wanted to share that with you guys if you're interested or if we're curious about it. I'm having a lot of fun, and my one fear, which is kind of coming true, is at night I want to work on this instead of cross stitching because I don't have to think, I just stitch. It was really nice. We went away Saturday, we met some friends at a raffle, an outdoor raffle where you're outside all day. We had tents, it was still pretty hot. But I took this long and I think, I think I got, I got several of the pink ones put on. I don't know if it was three or four of them because it was an all day event. And that was nice because I didn't have to have a pattern and I didn't have to count. But um, I am kind of missing my cross stitch a little bit too. So let me know in the comments if you are doing this with them. I would love to know. I think I am going to do um, the past the stash from last video now. We'll insert that now. Um, I will go over the items. I already wrote down the winners and I did record uh, me drawing it because I like to put that up on the screen. So let's do that. For you guys indulging me in the uh, all the jibber jabber about all the different things going on in life. Okay, so the first pasta stash item was from Fabric Flare. This brand new piece that I didn't use. And that's going to, here it is in the screen, 
um, Mary H four five five four. So Mary, please send me an email. My email address is across the screen here. Um, and let me know that you won. When you send me the email, just let me know what you won and, or not won, I don't know what the word is, what I'm going to give you. And um, your address, your mailing address, and I'll get that out to you. The next item was this pattern. I bought, I purchased two of these on purpose so I could share one um, called Freedom by or no i call it freedom oh the key word was freedom the key word was freedom the pattern's called day of jubilee i need to slow down and pay attention so the person that i'm sharing this pattern with is um i want to say that your name is joanne so it's joanne last name l-a-v-a-l-l-e-e -E. 2921, at least that is what your YouTube handle is. So, Joanne, freedom was the keyword. Please send me an email with your mailing address and I'll get this out to you. Okay, the next item was this little vintage piece of Red Ada. I picked up two of those at the thrift store. It was brand new in its package. I just took it out because I'm going to fold it when I mail it. So the keyword was hot. And this goes to Cindy. Cindy B, B like boy, 4486. And it's right here. So Cindy, if you'll send me an email with your address, I'll get that out to you. And last but not least was the needle organizer. Again, brand new in its package. I received two of them when I did my thrift store shopping. And so I'm going to share one. So the keyword was needle. Deb Robinson. D-E-B-R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N-8134. So Deb, uh, send me an email and I'll get this out to you. So thank you for everyone that put comments in. Um, and it's great when you try to make the comments funny. So we will do that. Um, I'll give you a little bit of time to get back to me. Um, and then, <clears throat> as always, if someone doesn't get back to me uh, in a reasonable amount of time, then it will go up for grabs again. So um, that's where we're at on that one. So I have another pasta stash for you this week, but we'll do that later on in the video. Um, I think it's something you guys are going to like. It's something vintage. Um, I thought it was really cute. So let's, let's do a mini whip parade so I can show you what I worked on in the month of July and pretty much probably everything I'm going to put away and then I'm probably gonna pull as we go through um, my whips. Um, I'll pull out the fall ones and decide which ones I'm going to start. I'm not gonna do a full whip parade, um, but it is kind of nice. It's, you know, a little past mid year and it's just kind of nice like to, you know, kind of put away summer and start easing into fall. Um, so I'm gonna just get up for a second. I'll be right back. I'm gonna grab the, the two baskets that I have my whips in. Okay, I'm back. I, and I, I don't like putting my backside to you or stepping away. So um, if it looks a little discombobulated when I pause and restart it or clip them together, I apologize. So, so I was working on henpeck. Really like this. That's where I'm gonna leave it for the year. Um, if you are curious about anything about any of these whips, just drop me a line, leave me a comment, and I will um, share that information with you. Um, I don't want to get too lengthy and too windy with what the floss is, what the fabric is, changes and all that. But I understand if you want to know, because sometimes I want to know when I see something somebody does and I want to, um, you know, follow along with what they did. Now this one I'm definitely going to leave out. She has not got any progress at all this last month. But it is an election year. 
So I'm going to leave this one out. I'm actually, I'm just even going to remove it from my, my bag here. I'll give it its own bag. So that was Suffragette by Little House Needleworks. I'm going to just set that over here. This, as you know, if you've been here before, you know this is really one of my favorite stitches. Um, so I want to work on that. This one here, I just worked on a couple nights ago. It's going to get put away for a while. This might be, sorry, the, the, my ink and my, P, I, this was a PDF I printed, so the color's a little off. Or no, no, it wasn't a PDF. Here, here's the actual cover. I made a working copy because I wrote on it, I wrote notes. So ideally, whenever I get this done, I mean, the pattern will be a little dog-eared, but I'll share it because I didn't write on it. But this might be one that might I might finish in frame and enter in the fair. I don't think I'd get it done in time for next year unless I really put some time into it. Since I'm a seasonal stitcher, I usually work on this during fair season, or at least I have for the last couple of years. I just started on that quilt, and it's a lot of fun to stitch. I kind of, I don't know if you would call it parking, but I do kind of like, instead of cutting and tying off, um, if I'm doing some color work, I'll just uh, poke it through out of the way. So I have those colors I'm working with. So this one I'm definitely going to put away. So like I said, I'm just really feeling the fall vibes. And I'm sorry if wherever you're at, it's miserable too, because um, it's just no fun. And I hope that you're, you are safe, that you have, you know, central air, or air conditioning, um, that you're able to stay cool because I'm pretty sure Steve got um, heat exhaustion one day. He was really, really sick. And then it passed, so we think it was heat related. Oh, this one. See, like when I get them on, I'm like, oh, I want to work on this one. I forgot about you, my friend. So here is a Lizzie Kate that I'm working on. Maybe I will keep this one out too. There's just not enough hours in a day. So, a Lizzie Kate. I think this is my first Lizzie Kate. I really like this one. And then this one I just started in, there's not, let me pull the needle out. There is not much to talk about there. That one was this pattern here. Which was free on Joyful World. Um, the blog spot actually is called the Snow Flower Diaries blogspot.com. So I just got a little itty bitty start. Let me slide this needle over here. And then this Lizzie Kate is called Busy Bee, if I didn't say that. So that's really pretty. Really, really pretty. Oh, another one from last year that I did not give much love to. I'll pull the needle out. So this is, I'm really loving it though. I made a lot of different fabric choices and I like this one. And here's the pattern, Koshetta Ogogo. And this is uh, gonna be eventually uh, well I don't know if I'll give it to her I might wait until she's a little bit older for my granddaughter Elena who just turned eight she is called uh, Miss Lainey Lainey Bugs so that uh, pattern made me think of her this is an adorable bag um, the maker didn't put a label on it but I got it off at Etsy and I apologize that I don't know who made it so if you're a bag maker if you if if you would like to put your labels on things then you could get credit for your beautiful work um, and if you're looking for someone to purchase your labels from ever emblem uh, on Etsy ever emblem um, I buy all of my labels from that from her him I'm not sure and uh, even at the fair all my stuff was tagged with my name and they cover it up with masking tape so it's fair so Nobody can play favorites if they would happen to know you. 
and um, some of the other contestants asked me where I got my labels and I shared that with them um, because they were, they're nice labels, they're high quality. Oh, this one, Kelly Kelly, here it is, Sacred. I, I, I'm torn between continuing since I have so much done and then sometimes I just want to throw the towel in. Again, I think it's because it's multiple pages and it's this huge piece of fabric. Um, but goodness, it's a nice stitch. And this is by Teresa Cogart. And there is a hashtag for this. Um, I'll put it on the bottom of the screen because I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. Oh, I wrote it on my project card. Hashtag TK Sacred Cross Stitch. So if you're stitching that, you could use that that hashtag. Here, I really want to start. I have everything pulled, and maybe maybe I should just start this. Uh, uh, Teresa Cogart. I got the floss. I'm going to just do it on a white 14 count Ada. So maybe maybe I'll get crack a on that one. I'll put that over here in my 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 maybe pile. See, like, I need to retire now because I have enough fun things in my life to keep me busy well past my expected life, my life expectancy. What is that what the sable stitchers say? Stash, what's it stand for? Stash accumulated beyond life expectancy. I think that's what sta sa sable stands for. Yes, 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 I agree. My stash, my projects, I have so many of them. They make me so happy. I'll get some bags for them. I did buy some, uh, oh, let me show you. I know this isn't a new concept. I, I think people have been buying bags like this off of Amazon. It's just like a step up from the Ziploc bag. But Walmart had these in a, a pack of, I don't even know how many for back to school. And so I got those for some of the ones that I don't have bags for, and I really am not making time to stitch. Um, so here is, this is a pretty recent one. I think I was working on this back in May and June. I'll tell you the pattern name. And drop me, drop me a note. Drop me a comment if any of these are things that you are also working on, or if you have, um, a pattern that you think I might like that kind of like you kind of are getting to know my my style what I, I gravitate towards I'd love to know now this one I'm pretty sure this one will be one I pull put in the new bag I think this had my birthday yes this had my, last year's birthday start so I'm definitely gonna get this one out and start, start working so next month my birthday is one month from today so and this is gathering acorns it's really beautiful really beautiful a lot of work I think I'm off a little bit in the tail somewhere but I'm gonna keep going so that's in here and I also even have the finishing fabric or some choices that I bought so that's all in here yep so I'm gonna put this in so that's gonna go in the new new rotation Yes, here we go. Now, now we're cooking. Now we're getting into the ones that are this time of year. So this one, it'll be super fast. So I'm super close to being done. So that one will get pulled out for now. And that'll be just like a little throw pillow, like a little pin cushion type pillow. So there's that one. This one here, oh, oh, nothing really going on here. These were just the Halloween versions of Lori Holt stitch cards. So I don't have anything going on and I did that. That was fun. That was the first time I did foundation paper piecing and I enjoyed that very much. So I'll just sit that there. This one I believe is something I really wanna work on. Yes, 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 yes. This is one that's hopefully gonna get a ton of focus this year. It's gonna be the season of witches for me, I guess. 
And even though that spider web's ghosting on this um, fabric flare, it's perfect, right? Because you don't usually see a spider web really pop out anyway. And the pattern is Silver, Silver Creek Samplers. And then, oh yes, definitely this one's gonna get worked on in a little bag. It's fully lined, following the Elizabeth Ann Ken stitch tutorial. I just used some scrap fabric I had to pack, make a little patchwork. So that, oh, I'm excited about that one. I think this one also has something exciting in it. Yes, 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 yes. This one, I think this will be my third season on this one, so it needs to get done. A stitching with the housewives. I can't have much left on that. Black Cat Bakery. And this bag I did not make. I purchased this from PT Bags. They have a little tag on there. And it's some Teresa Kogut fabric. So sweet and dear. A stitching with the housewife zipper pull. Oh, see, I'm glad that we, 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 did we talk about this? I think I'm glad. Oh, and I'm sorry, like my hair is like crazy, crazy pants tonight all over the place because it's not quite long enough to put up yet. But when I got home, even though like we're in the house and it's cooler in the house, it's like, it's just warm. So it feels good to have it up off of me. So sorry, my hair is wild and sticking up everywhere. Okay, here's another great fall one. I, oh my gosh, this bag is like overly stuffed. I have way too much in it. I can't believe it's already time to get these out. I feel like I just put these away. These definitely need to go in a bigger bag. It's one of these itty bitty Lori Holt bags. So this one here, Isn't that beautiful? So that pattern is We Give Thanks by Calico Confectionery. It was a PDF. So if I had to guess, I would say I'm about halfway done. The color palette is just beautiful. So let me, you know what? I'm not even gonna shove that back in the bag because it's just, then I must have shoved this pattern in here, but I don't think I started it because I don't see a piece of fabric in here. Snapshot. So I'm gonna just set these aside because it's I'm not gonna start working on Thanksgiving, but I am gonna set it aside and get it a proper bag and give it the breathing room it deserves. Let's see if I have any other early fall Halloween-ish Yes, I do. I have a Shannon Christine designs. I think this is the first pattern of hers I've stitched. Very pretty, very, very pretty color palette. And I believe I'm just using all the called for floss. Looks like just DMC. So that'll go here. Let's see if I have any other that is like this time of season. <gasps> yes. Pickle Barrel Designs Harvest Time. And it's on this great, beautiful piece of fabric flare. I don't recall what it's called, but if you wanna know, it's probably on my project card. And this was one I think I started a couple times so I wasn't happy with my fabric choices, but now I think I found a winner. So that definitely is gonna be in the rotation. For, and this was, um, I think this was another Lori Holt panel I used. And this one I can tell I used on some Annie Soft and Stable in because it's one of those bags that can like just stand up on its own. Very, very nice. I like that Soft and Stable see if I have any other I think that's it I know right that's it like I'm gonna get all those done yep the rest is Christmas and then we're going into spring so I I don't need to do any of those oh I did start that snapshot Thanksgiving 
here it is. Yeah, it needs to go in a proper bag. It just got all wadded up. So I'll just set that there on the sewing machine. I'll deal with that. Now, so I talked about this one. So this pattern I bought last year is very popular. Um, maybe you've already stitched it. Maybe you have it in your stash and you'd like to stitch it. Um, I know I'm, I'm going to start it probably not tonight because now it's getting a little, it's getting a little late, but definitely this weekend I'm going to get it going. My thread pack, I did just order this from Fat Quarter Shop and it came in very nice. So I'll have to put my things on drops and I need to pick a piece of fabric. So if you want to join me, that would be great. I think Kelly from Farm on Highway J might start hers as well. Definitely, you know me, I'm a slow post stitcher, so it's going to take me probably a couple years to get this done. Um, and I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy every minute of it and not rush. And then this was also in my stash. So since we got the camper, I am going to start this in honor of the new camper. Um, however, I'm not going to stitch the whole chart. I knew that when I purchased it that I didn't... Um, I'm not a house stitcher. I do like stitching barns. This big lodge doesn't really do much for me, but I like the smaller motifs. So like, I think I'm going to do this, which is um, a beaver and maybe a hedgehog roasting marshmallows over a campfire. And then there's a bear in a tent. And I mean, there's like just little itty bitty motifs in there that are sweet and adorable. And they would be perfect as little smalls to either um, hang on the wall in the camper or um, there's not a whole lot of counter space so I don't think a little pillow would do but something something uh, to decorate the camper so maybe just like a little small um, wall hanging I can put up with 3m hooks and then also um, bring in the house when we winterize that way in case we would get little critters nobody's eating the cross stitch so yeah let's definitely start that one in honor of the camper um, the camper the camper it was a, a big dream of ours um and so you know we're really excited about it so thank you for bearing with me as i rambled on about the camper um also i think one other little piece of kind of exciting news and it's kind of you know whatever uh and then we'll do haul and we'll do the pasta stash and we'll wrap it up is I got monetized. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm kind of excited. I won't lie, I'm a little jazzed. Um, when I was getting close, I was like checking YouTube studio every day to see like where I was at. And uh, so I'm excited. And if you go back and you look at my very, very, very first YouTube video, which I would love to say like they're getting better, but probably it's probably just as sketchy as this one I had talked about and that was before I even knew I was going to do floss tube um I, I think it was during the pandemic and I was just playing around and um I had talked about hey I'm going to do a channel and I'm going to get monetized and I'm going to buy a camper my husband and I are going to retire and have a camper and live the dream and all of that and guess what you know I got monetized and I bought a camper. My monetization <laughs> did not pay for the camper. <laughs> but um, you know what? That's kind of cool because I wasn't, this is mostly, it is. It's a hobby for me. A hobby about my hobbies is what I always say. But it is pretty neat to think about that, you know, there's enough of people out there that like the content. You guys like it. You comment. You you give it a thumbs up, uh, you know, you come back. Uh, it's really cool. So I want to thank you guys so much, especially those of you that have, you know, when, when, you know, there was 20 of us and I was on, was on cloud nine because there was 20 of us and, you know, 18 of you were my relatives. No. <laughs> No, thank you. You know, uh, Gigi's been one of my biggest fans. My mom, she always watches. <laughs> so mom, don't skip the commercials because <laughs> I get paid now. <laughs> uh, 
doesn't, you know, my daughter doesn't watch, but she's a huge cheerleader. My husband has no idea what I'm doing back here talking to myself, but he's a huge cheerleader as well. And it is just super cool. So thank you from the very, very bottom of my heart. Um, you, I am, you, I don't know how to say that. I am who I am. I'm honest and authentic with you. Um, I'm not trying to be anybody that I'm not. Um, I don't think anyone's ever gonna, you know, I don't think the fat quarter shop's gonna call me up and, you know, ask me to like, you know, do whatever. But if they want to, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm willing and ready R reporting for duty. <laughs> Because I sure do spend enough money with them. <laughs> and darn them, you know, they send you a coupon and you're like, okay, I'll shop. <laughs> so anyway, speaking of shopping, let's do haul and then we'll wrap it up with my last pass of stash as a, as a thank you to you guys. I hope you like it. So, speaking of Fat Quarter Shop, they don't sponsor me, but I buy everything from them because I just love their shop so much. So this one here is, and I, if I can pull up from Moda's website, I'll insert a photo of this fabric. It is um, called Diana's Delight, I believe. And it was on sale. And I bought two rolls because I have on my bulletin board a picture of the Fat Quarter Bundle. And it's like in my shopping cart. It's like one of my wish list items. And it's all reproduction fabric. And it's not a palette that I normally I'm drawn to but I love this and I'm thinking the reason why I per went big on two jelly rolls is I think I, I want to make um, a jelly roll rug for our bedroom and I think I would like to make um, I obviously don't have enough unless I buy some yardage um, a quilt at least maybe a throw quilt that could be folded at the end of our bed or maybe just hung on the wall we have we do have wall space in the bedroom where I could display a quilt and we do have blackout curtains in our bedroom that I hardly ever open because the front of the house gets so much Sun where our bedroom is and also our dogs are obnoxious and bark at everybody who walks by so the quilt would be safe on a wall so that's what I'm thinking for these nothing in the immediate works but that's where my head was with these um, they remind me of like 1800s um, Western and you know that's my that's my jam right there so anyway so I got those then I this was also on I think this might have been a flash sale one day I'm not sure so this is the fabric um, that I'm using for my English paper piecing now the jelly roll strips are um, two and a half inch. Actually, Jelly Roll is like a trademark name by Moda. So I think these are called maybe Rolly Polies or something from Riley Blake Designs. Anyhow, it is what it is. But even though I, I won't be able to cut my hexes out of these because my hexes are too big with the seam allowance, I thought that I would love to have some extra fabric because this is going to be a beautiful quilt that's going to take me a very long time to make. And I have some extras um, fabric that I can make like a throw pillow that might match or um, you know, something that can coordinate in some way, shape or form or because I think that is going to be one of those projects that I'm going to be like, this is pretty special because of all the time that's going into it. So I got three jelly rolls. Then and now, and I want to preference this we're saying that it has been multiple weeks since you've seen me so it's not like I bought all this last week and also you know we don't have kids at home I don't want anyone being all judgy with me <laughs> and what I what I spent <laughs> but so this this happened because <laughs> I always have a story right my ironing board was like as old as the hills like before I was even married like like I was even 20 and I had this ironing board and it's lasted me all these years through every move across country and the thing just gave up the fight it was kind of leaning and I was afraid that the iron was gonna like eventually fall off and burn me one day and so you know I gave it to Steve to, to throw, take down to the dumpster to throw away and he's like, I can't even figure out how to close it. I'm like, that's the issue. It won't close. That's how bent the frame is. 
So with that being said, I wanted to get a new ironing board. Well, girlfriend hasn't bought an ironing board in like 40 years and I didn't know they were like so much to get a nice one. So then I was like, I don't need a full size ironing board. I do not iron my clothes for work. Um, I usually wear t-shirts and look like a hobo, so it doesn't matter. And if I'm garment sewing, I can use like one of those smaller, and I did get one of those, like those tabletop ironing boards. But instead I focused on quilting and crafts because that's, you know, where my jam is, right? So I got a really, really nice wool mat. Haven't opened it. And I got a silicone plate for my iron. And let me show you. Like, I always feel like I gotta justify this. Why? Why, right? I'm a grown up. I can buy what I want. So this is my iron, which is a beast in a good way. It is a Rowenta. It is cracked. It is sticky right there. And I got it at the thrift store about 100 years ago for less than three bucks. Great brand of iron. I would never have a problem buying one. But, and there's nothing wrong with it. Other than the fact, I was like, oh, I got this new mat. I like to have a cute little iron that's kind of fancy pants and whatever. So the big iron's gonna get put away. I'm not gonna throw it away. I'm not gonna chuck it because it works. It's just ugly. And it's big and it's heavy. It's a heavy iron. Great for garment pressing. So I got instead, ta-da, ta-da. I haven't even opened it. It came today. It was on the porch waiting for me. I don't even know how you say it. Alicia, maybe, iron. And I went with the minty green. I thought about the pink, but I thought I really liked the little minty blue for a change of change of pace. So I cannot wait to try that out. And I don't usually use steam. I usually um, dry press with best, best press spray, but I hear this is a really good steamer. And, um, it, and it's small and it's a little bit lighter weight and the cord, my understanding is the cord will kind of move better where this on the Rowenta, the cord is always jacked up as I'm trying to, so I thought this would be nice. So my goal is like, you can't see, but like where I'm sitting, the iPad is sitting on my cutting mat on a, on a just a folding table is all it is. It's like a long folding table and the, and I have like a, three a three by two by three cutting mat on here so i'm just gonna put the um, pressing mat on top of here in one corner and plug in the iron and then like i'll just here's the sewing machine come over press 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 and then i wonder why i keep gaining weight because i don't even get up my hobbies are all sitting but that's a whole nother story a whole nother video we won't even go there so anyway so that's what i that i'm i'm excited um, let me know, do you have like an, a really nice iron or do you use, you know, like you're running the mill iron and you're happy with it? Um, any tips or tricks to using a, a wool mat and maybe try and steam? The only reason why I don't use the steam is I'm afraid of, uh, the, 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 pot, the minerals in the water building up in there. And then I don't know if I would be, um, good about making sure I only use like I don't even know distilled water spring water whatever in it and I wouldn't crack and then like just use whatever is coming out of our tap um, but let me know your thoughts because I'm sure you guys have nice irons and uh, you might have some 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 uh, feedback for me let me know now the rest is regular haul and thrift store haul and you guys seem to really like that, and I'm glad because I really like sharing. I don't share everything that I get at the store, but I only share it if it's, you know, craft related. So, so for regular haul, sticking with the, so those two items there, the iron and the mat, were not from um, a particular store. They were just Amazon purchases. Um, I was just looking for the best price, so that's where I found those. This I got from Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I've been hesitant. I don't know if it's just in my head to use a magnetic pin catcher because of like the computer system that's in the sewing machine. Like in my mind, I'm thinking the magnet's gonna mess it up. 
but I see people all the time using these, but then again, I don't know. I'm going to try it because I like the idea of pulling my pins out as I'm sewing and having the magnet grab it so I don't accidentally drop something on the floor. So anyway, that's why I got that. I bought um, some Casa Color Works. I, I don't need it for a particular project, but I was out of these two colors and these are two colors that I really like. Cherry Cobbler, which kind of shows up a little more orangey, but it's really more red and licorice red. That's another question I have for you. What do you guys think of the lighting? Like, is it okay? Or do I need to like do something different? Please let me know. And then these, I cannot say enough good things about these tins. So these are those little friction pins that um, heat erase. I had one like this and it got a workout this year with all the quilting that I did because like I would mark the lines and then when you press it goes away. So my other one kind of was like all used up. So I ordered another one and then I thought, well, why not try one of these? Um, so this one's black and then this one will be like a white silvery color. I haven't tried it yet, but um, that would work like on those darker fabrics that should show up where black doesn't. So I'm going to give that one a try too. I'm really excited to try those out. I got a little mini, mini charm pack because I love this fabric. This is Brenda Riddles Ellie. And I did use the, uh, where's it at? Right? Nope. Well, there's a green ticking in, in this fabric line that I used to bind the one of the quilts that won a uh, first place ribbon. Um, and all, all the fabric used in that quilt was from Brenda Riddle, but a different fabric line that I had purchased earlier and I couldn't get any more of, so that's why I mixed in some from this line, Ellie. I think, I think definitely, I think, no, I know. Um, she is one of my most favorite fabric designers. I love her color palettes a lot. Really pretty. So I thought maybe this would be cute for a little project bag, because I really need some more project bags. I got a couple of patterns, um, a bee pattern, be happy, which I'll put away and work on maybe next year. And then I got a primrose autumn quilt. And these are such fun little stitches. So this I might leave out. I'm gonna add that to my pile of, I might stitch soon. <laughs> or actually I'll put it right here. Okay, then I, um, it's all done, I believe, the Star Wonder Mystery Quilt Along and Stitch Along with Fat Quarter Shop. I did not participate, but I printed, um, I think, half of the quilt patterns. Um, and I need to go online and print the, 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 the final bit. I have the fabric line here, and I really, um, my heart desires to make this because I love the colors and I really thought it was pretty. So that is hopefully, I don't, I don't know, I've got, I've got a lot going on, but I want to make it someday. This was a PDF pattern I bought online. Just couldn't resist. I'm not a cat person, but Abby is. So um, I don't know if that's something she might like to make, or maybe someday I'll make for her. So that goes in the, the pattern bucket. I bought this online. It is so beautiful. I don't even know how to say that designer's name. It's a PDF on Etsy and it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And it's, um, it's color, multi-pages, huge, huge, um, chart, symbol keys, the model is stitched on 14 count Ada. The pattern measures 67 by 74 and it is all DMC. And then there's like even a little instruction that come, tells you how to cross stitch. So it's probably very, very beginner friendly. Very sweet. Cannot wait someday to stitch that. Um, speaking of stitching things soon, I signed up for this pattern to get it auto shipped to me. It's part of a, a, a bigger collection that I'm um, definitely going to start this winter. Let's see. I think that was, oh, no, one more. 
One more for, uh, this is a Fat Quarter Shop Club Floss Fix. It's every month that you're shipped um, for Floss Fix Classic Color Works. So this month was Golden Star. Goldfish. Granny Annie, a beautiful, deep, rich blue. Great Pie. Another great color, Grasshopper. And another pretty green, Green Onion. Looks kind of silver in my lighting, but it is a very pale green. So I will add those to my floss. And then the rest of my stash is just a couple of items that I picked up on either Facebook Marketplace or the thrift store. So for Facebook Marketplace, I got this wall hanging kit. And I don't know if somebody had it for sale at one time in a yard sale, it sends $10 on it. I'm sure it was more than $10. And I think I paid maybe $20 for it, which I was totally okay with. All the pieces are pre-cut and ready to rock and roll. And then this, I'll set aside. I've got a mess going. And look at this, save the stitches. I'm gonna pull it out of the frame. And it's just a sweet little deer stitch somebody did. It ended up at the thrift store. 50% off this item. Friendship keeps hearts in touch. It's, it looks like it was a stamped kit. I'm gonna take it out of the frame, clean it up a little bit and maybe make it into something. And then I got this at the thrift store. Isn't that cute? It's just a book of Mary Ingbright's inspired patterns. And then look at this, speaking of cross stitch. Okay, the 90s, the 80s and 90s are calling, right? The sweatshirt, my mother-in-law, Dorothy, God bless her. She was such a crafty girl back in the day. She would buy sweatshirts and then she would buy, like you could buy fabric that you would cut out, like a picture of a bear. And then she would use that puff paint and paint all around it. And like, it was like, you know, the beast knees back then, but now we'd be like, so anyway, that's what this reminds me of. Um, I was thinking of actually for the granddaughters, wouldn't this be sweet? to cross stitch like these little like this a little fall sweatshirt or a little you know a little sweatshirt to play in some of the smaller ones because you know it's not it's gonna get boogered up and stuff but I thought boy wouldn't that be just cute on a little girl maybe a big girl but anyway I like it and then I think I think that's it I think we've come to the end the end of the show folks so I hope that you're excited about past this past the stash. Let me grab it. I'm sorry, I'm looking away. Let me grab it. Where'd it go? So this is something that I bought at an antique store one time when I was back home visiting in Iowa. And it is, it's not a wall hanging because there's no sleeve, but it's probably more like a little qu uh, baby quilt. It's little. It has Scotty dogs on it. My dog Molly is supposedly mixed with Scotty. She was sold to me as a Scotty poo. I probably got taken for a ride. <laughs> but anyway, so that's why I like this quilt so much. Um, it is, you know, it's vintage. It's been used. I mean, it's not like antique, but it's definitely been used. Um, let, me, let me put on my glasses and tell you if I can tell you anything about it. It is machine quilted, just some stippling. I don't think it was long arm stip. I think it was free motion quilted on someone's machine. It looks like they've put um, hearts in it in a couple places. Um, there's the word hugs. I don't know if you can see that. Hugs right there. It's nicely done. I will, um, it says dreams, 
I'm going to toss it in the wash with a little bit of OxyClean um, because I am a pet home. I mean, no pets have been on this. It's just been hanging on a ladder in my living room. Um, I'll just to freshen it up a bit before I send it to you. And, uh, you know, there is no maker's mark on it, so I don't know the year. I don't know the dates. Well, the year would be the date. <laughs> I don't know any any origin. All I can say is that I purchased it uh, secondhand. It looks like I'm not so on the back where the Scotty dogs are. It's not quilted, so I'm trying to figure out. I guess the Scotty dogs were applique on, and then they free motion quilt around them. I think it's deer, and I hope you you think it's deer as well, and that you would love to have it in your home. So there it is. If you would like to to own this little treasure, um, dog, just the word dog, that'll keep it simple. If you're interested in the and in being put in the pasta stash for my next video, I will um, draw this, and the word is dog. It measures. Well, let me tell you what it measures real quick. It's less than 36 inches wide. It's about 32 by. 32 by 36 maybe it's very nice so I thought um, since I made myself some quilts of my own that I want to display in the house I didn't uh, need this one anymore for decoration and I didn't want to put it away and just have it in storage I'd rather have somebody else Put it out and use it it would make a great table topper it'd make a great quilt for a little baby you could put a sleeve on the back of it and use it as a wall hanging um like i said i have like an old ladder in my living room that was a quilt my grandmother made me on it um another quilt that my grandmother made for my son when he was born and now it has um a quilt that i made um and finished hanging on it now so i'll pass this along so if you made it this far, you are a champ because I know that I was a little wound up in the beginning, but I was so excited to come back and talk to you. I told Steve that I was missing YouTube. I, I, I just felt like I hadn't, I hadn't been on YouTube to watch anyone, any floss tube. I have not been on Instagram. I have not, I have not done all the fun things because we have been busy with so many other things, which are fun, but also kind of stressful and you know, coordinating things. My car was in the shop for several days. It is now back. And now Steve's needs to go in because his check engine lights on. We were supposed to take the camper in within 10 days to get its uh, PA inspection done. Um, we're gonna miss that window of time because the garage, since my car was in longer, just coordinating everything has just been a disaster. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, you, you know, so I'm going to stop. I think you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. If you like, if you, if you like me, <laughs> give me a like, uh, give me a subscribe and I hope to see you again. Um, probably next week I'll post another video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.